I was uh, cleaning up the other day and I came across these uh, motorcycle parts. This here is uh, exhaust. It uh, looks like it's stainless steel, which would be uh, pretty resistant to heat. And this here, and this one here, just an old steel one. Uh, looks like I guess it's a header or something. And it's got the exhaust uh, manifold on it. Anyway, I thought that would be a good opportunity to make a, uh, a valveless pulse jet. And I figured what I'd do first is cut some of this up, see what it's made of, see if I can take it apart easy, and that kind of stuff. This is some of the options that we have for designing a valveless pulse jet engine. Uh, as you can see, there's quite a different, many different ways it's been tried and done. These are all, uh, these models all have been proven to, to work to some degree. They all have advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the first one here would have the intake curved combustion and exhaust. And then here shows where we have the intake combustion curve in the exhaust. There's also one where you put the intake in the front of the combustion. Here we have a twin in, in the front and also a twin in the rear. And it's a pretty uh, simple one where you've got the intake combustion and exhaust. Now you've probably noticed the first four of these all have the intake facing the same direction as the exhaust. There's a reason for that. The intake does produce some thrust, not as much as the exhaust, but it produces some, and that keeps it from canceling out. So that is preferable, especially running it statically, where it's just sitting on a stand, and also low-speed applications. Now these other two, where they run the intake combustion exhaust, or the intake facing towards the front, possibly was done as an attempt to get a little bit of extra air pressure now, as far as actual ramjets, it's my understanding that you have to have really high speeds in order to get a true ramjet to get function. It's uh, hundreds of miles an hour. So, in, in cases where you're going to be putting on a cart or a bicycle or a motorcycle frame, you're not going to really get a true ramjet going. You will get some benefit from the pressure, but it also causes other problems as far as the uh, the, uh, the way the gas functions. So. That is pretty much it as far as uh, the most common uh, design choices. There are far more exotic, of course. Okay, I've done some preliminary cuts on the uh, motorcycle exhaust, and what I've come up with is I've already taken the guts out of it. I've got a nice heavy gauge stainless steel tube. It would be excellent for the combustion chamber. And we also get a short length of straight heavy duty stainless tube and a flange, which I thought could be welded together and give us a pretty good extension for the exhaust. And then, of course, we have the carbon steel, which would go onto that extension. Because these, these drawings are not at all at scale. They, they're going to be much longer than they have shown. Another interesting thing that came out of the muffler was this here. It's got three holes, and they just so happen to fit this uh, motorcycle shoe here. It just uh, slips right in. And so what I was thinking, uh, this would be too small for any of the curved designs. But on this one here, I could, I could cut and make these curves double back on themselves by, by cutting one curve and welding it to the other. I could have three intakes that would fit into this. And this would weld, weld onto the back. And this is all stainless here. This is not stainless, but it can be changed later. Another thing that would be, I think, a good idea is to have a bolt or plate, two plates, so that I could actually change my intake and try different ideas. It would allow for more experimentation since I will have this nifty, heavy duty uh, stainless steel uh, combustion chamber. Uh, so 
I'll use two single steel plates with bolt screw and try a different configuration rather than having to cut the weld. So I'll uh, go ahead and get started on it and see how it goes with some of the welding and all that. And uh, we'll go from there.